Hopefully we've seen some good games this season. Indeed we have. Port by five points. What a finish. More on that shortly. Down to Kevin and James. James, how did you describe that? Was it a surreal experience, especially considering the result? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I think regardless of the result, um, it was just great to see so many Essendon supporters, Richmond supporters, and great of the club to um, put that on for Kevin and I. Um, you know, it was a disappointing night from the from a performance point of view, but uh, the end part was um, was amazing, and you know, really appreciate the club for putting that on for me. And Can you believe the crowd? It was, it was almost a, a sea of, of red and black. There was only a small pocket, really, of, of Richmond fans. Yeah, it's great. I mean, Essendon fans have been amazing for the 17 years I've been here, and I'm sure for the 27 years Sheeds has been here. But, um, you know, Sheeds has built up a, an army of Essendon supporters. I think there's a million of them in the country, and uh, probably 800,000 of them because of this bloke here, and um, they all came out tonight. How do you feel, Kevin? Oh, I disappointed that we, we lost the game. I felt that, um, you know, uh, whilst we've got some younger players in this team. Uh, I thought Richmond were very good. I thought that um, obviously the crowd was uh, fantastic and exciting for both of us, but uh, we don't deserve to be in the eight. It's as simple as that. We won ten games, they won two and a half games. So uh, the only good thing about tonight is that the Bombers get an earlier draft pick, and we didn't intend that. Can you believe that that's the, the end of the Melbourne sector of, of, for, two, for the two of you? Well, I think you have to think. <laughs> um, probably, uh, well, it doesn't matter. We go to West Coast next week and there's going to be uh, a packed house over there. And it's, um, you never know, we might win. But uh, I think I'll pick some young players next week. I know you concentrate on the four points, Kevin, and you've got to do that. But of so many do. Richmond people and so many Essendon people, um, and they all saluted you, the Tigers. Oh, look, I was very good at the club to, to um, present me with a, a sign with Richmond Guernsey after the match. It was, uh, I really appreciate uh, Richmond for that. But the Tiger fans and myself have always had a very, very close relationship with regard to the Tommy Hafey Club, a great supporter of it. And um, obviously Dreamtime, the G, and, and tonight, tonight um, I think we probably would have got about uh, 150,000 uh, ten the two clubs' matches this year. So. You know, it's, it's good to see the Tigers and the Bombers starting to, you know, hit some really good crowds and attendance. We obviously need our teams to get up there and play better footy. But, um, yeah, the last couple of years have been pretty tough for both clubs. James, that, that's the last time you're ever going to play in front of a Melbourne crowd. What went through your mind in the last few minutes? Uh, I was just a bit of a daze, really, um, when we knew we'd lost. And, you know, I've always been a player that thrives on competition and uh, in the last 10 minutes or five minutes we were gone, there was no competition. It just felt a bit flat and um, disappointing. But, you know, you put your career in context and, uh, and, and don't just think about that last game. It's, it's been an incredible ride and um, loved every moment of it. The last half of my last game in Melbourne wasn't great, but as she said, we've got uh, one more game at West Coast and we'll be trying to win that. James, you've just been back out onto the ground with the stadium empty with the kids and having a kick. What was that like? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I, my kids have been asking me to have a kick on the MCG since they were born, so they're not going to get another chance. And uh, you know, I just I took the opportunity and, yeah, it's something special, very special memories for myself and my kids and my wife. And you reckon that, that, you reckon that honestly, that, that you couldn't have a kick to kick with your kids on the ground in five years' time if you turned up and your car drove in and the, and the groundsman saw you and... Oh, come on, they'll say, go for it, Jimmy. We don't all park our car outside the change rooms and uh, get out and get choked and driven away. We actually have car parks we've got to go to some of us. Sorry. James, I think a bit more certainty in the next week now. How do, you, how do you sort of look forward to that now? What, what, how do your thoughts go towards that now? Yeah, it was uh, coming here today, I didn't think it was the last time I'd play in Melbourne. I legitimately thought we'd win and then we'd win in West Coast. And Disappointing, but yeah, I suppose it, there's a level of finality to it now that, you know, your last training session in Melbourne will be Wednesday. Um, last game uh, coming up, you know, it's, I suppose they'll have a week to come to terms with it. But um, yeah, as I keep saying, it's been an amazing ride. The club has been amazing, the support has been amazing, and I'm spent, you know, I'm, I'm tired, I'm, I'm gone, um, and I'm happy with what I've achieved. So I think you go out on those terms, you can be relatively happy. Sheets, what went through your mind when you met James walking around at the end there? Oh, look, I was probably uh, really disappointed in our effort tonight, to be honest. Um, I thought the team let Jim down, to be honest. 
But at that, at that moment when you both met, when you were walking around the Oval at the end? Oh, well, that's very special, you know, but that doesn't... That's the first time that's ever happened. Um, but in general, I mean, look, I suppose I've got to keep my mind on the many people who come from a long way to, to see the game, and um, once the siren goes, you've got to start life again, don't you? So um, I enjoy the moment. I went out there and kept an eye on Hurdy to see whether he could catch me. Because you were bowling, um, I was bowling early. <laughs> because... Which sort of kids do you think you might look at for next week over there? Um, I like to take the West Australian kids over there. I'd probably like to play Joe Nagel. So he may get looked at. How serious is Scott Cambrell's injury? I'd say he's fairly serious. Don't think he'll play again. I think he'll probably have an operation. Do you reckon that's his career? Oh, too, too early to say, because you can't make those diagnoses so early, but it's here, I mean, he's got to really think about it, I'd say. Mm. In fairness, he's got him. Yeah. He's had uh, three different injuries in the last 12 months, and that's just a warning from your body, isn't it? Kevin, um, James spoke about the club and you, what you've done to us in the footy club, and the institution that you've helped build into a superpower. The team, how would you compare the team that you're going to leave to the next SNL coach to the team that Barry Davis left you? Uh, look, I think that I'll, the team that, that I was left with had about 10 or 12 really good players. So I'm hoping that I can leave that 10 or 12 really good players. And, you know, um, I think that's about where it'll be. I'm pretty sure Lake Offer and Ryder and Wynn Lillick and Stanton and Slatter and Montfrey, so they'll be pretty good players. I think they yeah, I think. There's a couple of others there that I'd like to put in and have a, another look at. His gum will look quite good when he come back on after half time. So I think the spine's pretty good and the midfield had been changing, but you know, they've got to go the next step. Um, I mean, I was left with some very good players, but I had to go and get 10 or 11 myself to, to finally get there in that run of grand finals in 83, 4, and 5. So no matter what, a new coach is going to have to get another half a team, I'd say. How far, how many years do you think this team is off the Premiership? Um, I'll let the new coach answer that. Ken, was there a moment tonight, and I know you were focused, but when you, you kind of got overwhelmed by emotion at any point, lump in the throat or anything like that? Oh, probably. Um, I enjoyed walking around saying hello to the fans. I've probably met them nearly every one of them. Some mm -hmm. stage of my life at some night. Or, mm -hmm some dinner or lunch or, you know, sportsman's night or... So I actually enjoy people. I don't mind, I'm not embarrassed about saying that. Uh, my family are like that. Probably, um... Probably meeting my family after the game, my, my sister Anne Marie, she's a bit of a tearjerker. She's got to stop that. She's the youngest. Haven't seen my own family, but they're sitting up there behind you, watching every word you say. Here you know. You know, fishing could be your go, uh, you know, football, you know, racing's on the wane and, uh, you know, fishing, any chance of a fishing line? Or this is my oldest brother, ladies and gentlemen, and he's the most dangerous person in the family. A uh, wedding cake's the most dangerous thing to bed. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think Paddy and I better see each other because I haven't seen him for 40 years and he wrote that once in a book and I thought I'd better, better, better say hello. James, what about when, you know, down the track someone asks you what's your lasting memory of your last game on the MCG. If you oh, had to think, pick it now. Oh, I think that lap of honour was um, incredible. Mm. I, you know, I'm just so thankful for the club for organising that. Disappointing night from a result point of view, but you know, do that with your, your three children and, and walk around the MCG and have 89,000 people yeah. cheer and clap Kevin and myself. You know, that, that's very special, very, very special. And um, the, from a game point of view, they all blend into each other, but things like that, you'll never forget. What about for you, James, that moment when you met Sheedy around then? Oh, but I think, for me, Kevin Sheedy has been the football club. Like, I read an article this morning um, about Sheeds, I'm not sure which paper it was in, but about how people haven't known this club without Kevin Sheedy, and I haven't. You know, I, was, I think I was six or seven when Sheedy started coaching, and he's the only... He, he's been the footy club and everything I know about the footy club and I suppose I've been thinking about my own retirement but Kevin Sheedy to me is the Essendon Football Club and I can't imagine it without him. I mean we're all going to have to see it without him. Um, I back for Essendon as a kid, Kevin Sheedy was the coach. I went and watched the 84 85 grand final, cheered him when he held up the cup and was lucky enough to play footy under him and he's taught me so much and, and I've idolised the man.
and to meet him on the MCG and give him a hug and I suppose it was more from a point of view of thanking him for what he's done for Essendon. I'm an Essendon supporter for a start and he's made the Essendon Footy Club a powerhouse. It wasn't a powerhouse back in 1981 when he, when he started. It was, a, it was an also ran club in the middle ranks of the VFL. It's now the powerhouse of the AFL. No one else has done that for a footy club. Kevin Cheedy has. This game's been coming for a long time, Kev, and um, it's dirty said he's spent, he's gone and he's exhausted. How, how are you feeling with the emotional lead up to this game and now that it's finished? Uh, look, knowing for well what's coming over in, in the West, uh, you just met the, the next challenge, which is the last challenge, say. Um, but today was a great. Look, from our point of view, we would love to have won it, but when you turn up and the stadium's absolutely just about full, uh, that's pretty special. And of course, um, you know, I remember watching an old movie called Ben Hur, and it was a great movie. You know, you said then, absolutely. But a lot of young people like James wouldn't oh. know Ben Hur. But when you actually get out there to actually compete with the ferocity, um, that's all I've known about the MCG, you know, it's, it's a coliseum, it's, it's, it's like a valley of greatness and a valley of, uh, uh, right along the Yarra River, it's just been sensational in my life ever since my brother Patrick and I used to come here in the tram and so when, when you look about how energetic you are or, or not, um, I've still got lots of energy in me, it's just about which direction I'm going to place it. Shane, how do you feel putting that Essendon gear away? Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, different, different. But I mean, I had to do that after I put the Richmond gear away, and you know that was very, very hard too. But those sorts of things happen in your life when you move into the next sort of arena, whatever that's going to be. Um, Just add a bit of blue to it, seems to be fine. A little bit of blue. <laughs> well, I mean, I tell you what. Um, I just imagine Van Diemen's Land. <laughs> I won't go there, OK. It's just one of those sorts of... Um, I do put a bit of thought into it, you know. So in the end, um, look, uh, Black and Red's been marvellous for me. I was a kid, I always had an Essendon in Guernsey. I went to school in Richmond, I played for Richmond. Um, and haven't moved out of this area all my life. Uh, obviously spoken to a lot of clubs to move to over the years in uh, contract negotiations. Probably half a dozen to maybe six or eight. Uh, never went. And that's, I think, siren, isn't it? That little phone. Uh, James, you spoke from the heart about what Kevin's done for the club. What do you reckon the immediate future? Off-field, we all know it will still be very strong. What about off-field for the next two or three years? The, the SM40 team? Oh, look, I think, you know, we, as she said, we, we've got some work to do. We've got a lot of young players, but there's the... There's some talent there. Um, you know, uh, big things of, of Gumbledon, Ryder, um, Winderlich, you know, McVeigh and Welsh, good, very good players. Lloyd, Lucas. The, the, there's that 10 or 12 players I think there who can really form a backbone of the club. There's no doubt the new coach has got a massive task. I mean, you don't replace Kevin Sheedy and do it easily. It's, it's a massive task for the new coach, and I think that, you know, Sheedy has left the club in a good state. But the, I think the new coach has got a big job because replacing Kevin Sheedy doesn't happen overnight. What's Jay Nash's condition? Uh, look, I would say that he is not really um, right just yet. I think he's just got some tingling in his hands and that, so he's, he needs to be looked after, I would say, for sure. Um, I put that perspective to the team. Yes, we did lose, but, you know, we may have lost Camp Rowley never to play. Again, maybe. Nash is in hospital and needs... Um, uh, well, it's her, one of our doctors is, is with him, so we got, we're waiting on a, a full report of that. But he's got a bit of, you know, probably a bruised nerve, maybe. So we've got to be very careful and uh, make sure that we wish him all the best in that regard. And obviously we, um, we wait on that report because otherwise um, it'd be unfair to make a comment. James, given the occasion and, and the way in which you were greeted by so many people, uh, and Kevin as well. Does the result really matter? Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, we, we were playing for a final spot. The, the result matters massively. Um, the, the bit about Sheeds and I for, the, for that lap of honour and the occasion, that, that's, 
that's great and it's, it makes you feel nice inside. But, but we play and she's coached to win four points and to be part of a, a premiership team. And up until two hours ago, I still thought we were a chance to go there. So it really matters and it hurts. Um, it hurts the, to think that I'll never play a really competitive game of football again. Yeah, we go to the West Coast. But it hurts that never ever can I go into a game thinking I can still win a premiership. And that, for a competitor, and I know he'd be feeling the same way, that, that, that does hurt. And that is, um, that's the saddest part about tonight. Some players have that feeling all their career. And they're just unlucky that they get to the wrong time at the wrong club with a, um, probably a lack of talent and ability for a number of years. Uh, I've always been fortunate to get to two clubs, three clubs, Pran, um, Richmond and Essendon at the right time to do and um, be very fortunate to achieve things. Some players have never been in a situation that Heard and I have been in. And they just, they just look at us and say, yeah, but you're, you're, you are so lucky to be where you've been done what you've done and uh, there are some times where people will get used to it and it's happened in the past and some of these clubs have never been back for 40 years. Did any of those memories just flash into your head Kev when you were just walking around saluting those people tonight? Look I think that um, the biggest continued of black and red I've ever seen in a, in a, in a game probably was Essendon West Coast about 86,000 I reckon it would have been about 1996 uh, sorry yeah about 1996, maybe. And uh, I've never seen a massive black and red or one team's colour so much, particularly against West Coast, which obviously was an interstate side, that to get 86,600 or whatever it was, that I've never seen that before. Uh, tonight was another exceptional attendance from those sorts of uh, fans that wanted to come along. That may not have been Bomber fans and Bomber fans, but in the end, uh, footy's about people. And the people own the game. And guys like myself work in it, and people at the AFL just adjudicate the decisions as administrators. But it's about people. And um, I'd just like to thank Bill Kelty for talking to the team before the match. He spoke really well. And um, yeah, just out of respect for a person who gave of his time, thought about what he said. Young people need to meet more people like him and listen to those sorts of people. So I think in the end, uh, they're very, very fortunate. I've heard him speak twice and uh, he was excellent. So you don't often get a commission in, but as Bill said, he probably felt that he was replacing the late Ron Evans when he said uh, what he felt about the team and as a club. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Great tribute from the media downstairs. I'm glad we are able to share that with you across Australia on Fox Sports AFL. One Final Melbourne press conference, a farewell from Kevin Sheedy and James Hurd. Just so much we could talk about from what they talked about there. Great respect for each other. Oh, there's no doubt about that. It's been yeah. one of the great uh, doubles. And to think that, you know, James was only a boy of 14 when Sheeds was actually dominating <laughs> as a coach, 84 yeah. or 85. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, there's some incredible facts in football. And Kevin Sheedy is an incredible fact. I was doing some research on Hawthorne um, when talking about the captains yeah. on the weekend. Michael Tuck had What's to wait up? till he was 32 years of age to become captain and he lifted the premiership cup four times post 32 <laughs> years of age that is incredible yeah. mm. and yet even that pales into insignificance when you look at uh, the impact that kevin sheedy's had on the game over so mm. long a period 17 17 to 13 14 tigers home by 27 points in their farewell before their press conference we were we brought you the closing stages from geelong let's reflect on that scoreboard now and what it means